Saturday marked three years since the World Health Organization declared COVID-19 a worldwide pandemic. The death toll from the virus is approaching around 7 million people. And even with effective vaccines and treatments, the virus is currently killing up to 1,000 people a day worldwide. So I want to bring in Dr. Julie Morita for more on this. She's the executive vice president of the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation. She's also an advisory committee on the advisory committee, rather, for the CDC director, Rochelle Walensky. Thank you so much for joining us. Wow. So three years and this is where we're at. We're still talking about COVID um, and people still have a lot of questions. Like, funnily enough, there's still a lot of confusion about uh, COVID. Um, what can we, I guess, expect kind of or I guess the question is, where are we now in this fight? Good morning. Thanks so much for having me today. I think, you know, as much as we'd like COVID to be behind us, it's really not behind us. We still are living with it. There's still about 30,000 cases that are identified on a daily basis. And we have about 1,000 people or over, over 1,000 people who are actually dying every week. And I think that's important to be aware of, and it's significant. Um, I think what we know is that this has impacted our lives dramatically. And so we are hitting the three year mark and things are resuming more, people are resuming more normal activities. We're able to go to work, we're able to socialize. Our lives have not been changed. Many people have lost loved ones, million, over a million people in the United States have died. We know that you know 300,000 children and more have actually lost a parent or a caregiver. So this, there's been significant impacts because of what's happened with COVID. And COVID is not going away, and it looks very much like it'll be around, just like flu is on a regular basis. Dr. Marita, speaking of living with it every day, some people are still battling long COVID symptoms, literally dealing with it every day. Where does treatment stand, and how could it evolve over the next few years for those people? I think as this is a new emerging disease. COVID was as an acute infectious disease. And the long COVID is also one of those chronic, chronic long-standing consequences of COVID. And more work needs to be done to understand how to diagnose it effectively, how to treat it effectively over time. And so I think we're going to learn a lot more in the coming years about how best to manage it. The federal COVID emergency declarations are set to expire in May. Is that going to have an impact on the accessibility to vaccines and treatments? Yeah, so with the public health emergency ending, what happens is that free vaccines and free treatments that were made available because of the public health emergency will go away. However, the good news is that because there's a vaccines for children program and the vaccine is covered through that program, all children, regardless of insurance status, will have access to vaccines. Unfortunately, there's no federal program like that for uninsured adults. And so because of that, what some of one of the manufacturers has actually created a program where people can actually get uninsured folks can actually get vaccines through that program. But it's really not the same as a federal program. The president has included a vaccines for adult program, which would make vaccines available for all uninsured people. But that yet has yet to be approved by Congress. And so for right now, it's really unclear how people who are uninsured will access these vaccines and also treatments. I think one of the things to think about is that we've learned that through Medicaid, allowing people to stay enrolled in Medicaid through the pandemic really helped us decrease our uninsured rates to record levels. And so by making sure that people that are becoming un, who are un, not eligible for Medicaid anymore, helping them to get enrolled in marketplace and making sure that people who are Medicaid enrolled can stay enrolled in Medicaid is really critical so that everybody who has Medicaid can benefit from the vaccines and also from treatments that are available. Dr. Morita, we just saw a picture of some of the different variants we've experienced. Should we be concerned about future COVID surges, future variants, once test kits and other programs are no longer government funded and subsidized? I think what we have to do is with all emerging diseases is keep our um, surveillance activities up so that we can detect new and emerging variants of COVID, but also for other viruses and bacteria. Because we know that, you know, in the past 40 years, we've had dozens, a couple dozen um, new and emerging diseases that have uh, emerged, things like Zika, Ebola, different forms of influenza, and they're from all over all, all other parts of the world. And so making sure that we have surveillance activities going through public health agencies to I, detect them is really critical. Establishing really good trusted relationships with other countries so that we're sharing information and detecting the diseases together and responding as quickly as possible. All those things are really critical. Dr. Julie Morita, thank you. Can't believe it's been three years. Thank you. Thank you.